Hello, and welcome to the May installment of Construction Junction, presented to you by MSU Infrastructure Planning and Facilities. We hope that you find this new online format of Construction Junction useful and informative. If you have any comments or questions concerning this presentation, or have suggestions on how we might improve, please let us know via the feedback box on the Construction Junction webpage located at the address on the screen. We thank you in advance for helping us improve your experience. The agenda for the May presentation will begin with updates on which projects are going to the Board of Trustees meeting. There will then be new project presentations on summer road milling and repaving and parking lot restriping, parking lot reconstruction projects, and the Abbott Road Landscape Rejuvenation Project. We will then have updates on the following projects. 1855 Place, Breslin Student Event Center Facility Upgrades, Facility for Rare Isotope Beams, Cyclotron Edition 16 Office, and Giltner Hall Alterations to Fish Lab. Moving on to the September BOT meeting, the projects going to the board will be for Step 2, Authorization to Proceed, Engineering Research Complex Edition 4 and Renovations, and Data Center, and for Step 3, Bid and Contract Award, Food Processing and Innovation Center. We begin this month's presentation with an overview of milling and repaving projects and parking lot restriping projects scheduled for this summer. These projects are necessary, as the asphalt conditions in these areas are to a point where safety is becoming a concern, and the pavement conditions will not last through another snow season with plowing. The work is scheduled to begin on the morning of Friday, May 13. Asphalt milling at all locations will last through Friday evening, and paving all locations and installation of pavement markings will occur Saturday morning through Sunday evening. Impacts to the campus community will include minor traffic delays, but traffic flow will be maintained during the entirety of the project. Access into parking lots adjacent to roadway resurfacing will be temporarily closed during pavement operations only. Once the asphalt cools to vehicle traffic temperatures, access will reopen. IPF will do its best to coordinate contractor schedules to line up the equipment needed for the weekend work to keep inconveniences to a minimum. Note that if inclement weather delays work, the areas that aren't able to get paved will be reopened to traffic on Monday, May 16, allowing cars to drive on the milled asphalt. Crews will then return after 5 p.m. during the week, weather permitting, to pave the remaining areas. Here is a map showing the five areas impacted. Kalamazoo Street from Harrison Road to Birch Road, Shaw Lane between Chestnut Road and Red Cedar Road, Science Road between North and South Shaw Lanes, Auditorium Road between Physics Road and Bogue Street, and the southwest bound lane of Wilson Road near the IM East Field. We will now cover the areas on campus scheduled for parking lot restriping this summer. The majority of parking areas on campus are striped on a three-year rotation schedule to ensure that markings remain clearly visible to lot users. Painting is scheduled in two-week time periods to allow for striping to take place in smaller sections and to also allow for weather delays. Parking areas that are being painted are generally shut down for two to three hours, but may take longer due to adverse weather conditions, which can cause the paint to dry slower. Impacts to the campus community should be minimal. Painting crews will begin work at 5 a.m. and spaces will be left available whenever possible. Campus visitors and employees are asked to refrain from moving cones or parking in spaces that are being painted or that have been recently been painted so as not to inhibit the painting crews. Here is a map showing the lots scheduled for restriping during the period of May 23 through June 10. Work at the Communication Arts and Sciences parking ramp, Ramp 5 at the corner of Red Cedar and Trowbridge Roads, is scheduled to begin sometime in June and will last throughout the month of July. Here are the lots scheduled for restriping during the period June 13 through June 24. And here are the lots scheduled for restriping during the period of June 27 through July 8. 
Note, the lot behind the IPF building, lot 59, will be restriped on a Saturday in July, with the exact date dependent upon weather conditions. And finally, here are the lots scheduled for restriping during the period of July 11 through July 22. If you would like further information about these projects, or have any questions or concern about the work being done, please contact Project Manager Adam Lawver. We will now cover the parking lots on campus that are scheduled for reconstruction during the 2016 summer season. There are four lots on campus that are scheduled for partial or full reconstruction, including Lot 83 on Service Road across from University Stores, Lot 88 behind Linden Services, Lot 92 adjacent to the chilled water plant, and Lot 89, the commuter lot. The work at Lot 89, the commuter parking lot at the corner of Mount Hope Road and Farm Lane, will include full reconstruction of the southeast portion of the lot and surface milling and repaving of the bus loop drives. The construction at Lots 83 and 88, behind the Linen Services Building and Power Plant Cooling Towers, will be phased, with the easternmost work being done April 18 through June 6, and the remainder of the work occurring May 9 through June 6. This project is necessary to separate storm and sanitary sewers to better handle rainwater during heavy weather events. And finally, the work at Lot 92, on Service Drive adjacent to the Regional Chilled Water Plant, will involve full reconstruction. The lot will be closed June 24 through August 19. There will be a pedestrian detour to the south of the lot that will impact the bike lane along Service Road, but no traffic lane closures are expected. If you would like further information about these projects or have any questions or concern about the work being done, please contact Design Representative Dave Wilbur. Next we have a presentation on the Abbott Road Landscape Rejuvenation Project. This project is located at the Abbott Road campus entrance between Campbell Hall and the MSU Union. This project is necessary as the Norway maples along this major circulation route represent a safety hazard. The overall condition of these trees is poor and they are experiencing continued declines in health, including internal decay, crown dieback, and girdling roots, mainly due to the fact that they are an invasive species not native to this area. Also, the Norway spruce identified has a decay column that extends to grade level and thus requires removal. The goals of this project include utilizing funding to improve a signature campus site, to renovate an aging landscape and strengthen the university's historical entrance, and to reinforce the campus landscape master plan and campus entrance's overarching goal, which is to establish a recognizable and visibly attractive design aesthetic that appropriately identifies the campus at its borders, provides for safe circulation, and aids in visitor wayfinding. The scope of the project will include removal of 21 declining non-native Norway maples and one declining Norway spruce along the boulevard, and replacing them with 14 swamp white oaks, which are a species native to the area, which will provide a stately canopy structure. It is important to note that some of the oldest trees on campus are swamp white oaks, which is a testament to their longevity. Removal of eight low evergreen groupings in the boulevard to improve circulation sight lines. Addition of five sugar time crab apples to provide a seasonal interest backdrop at the historic limestone marker. Infilling with five trees along the Union Building and Campbell Hall to maintain a park-like signature entrance. And compaction alleviation of an amendment to surrounding soils. This project is scheduled to begin on May 23rd to avoid impacts to commencement and the East Lansing Art Fair and is scheduled for completion on June 17. Impacts to the campus community will include closure of southbound Abbott Road between 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. from May 23 through June 10. However, the road will be open on weekends. Metered parking on southbound Abbott Road will not be available for the duration of the project. There will also be minor and intermittent pedestrian detours. 
Union sidewalks and parking bays will have temporary closures for repairs and exterior accessibility improvements. However, there are no utility shutdowns expected during this project. During this same period, we are taking the opportunity to restore the historic masonry benches alongside Campbell Hall. Here is a graphic showing the specimens planned for removal. And here we show the proposed planting replacements, as well as the historic benches that are being restored. If you would like further information about this project, or have any questions or concerns about the work being done, please contact Design Representative Tressa Wall. Now we begin our individual project updates, starting with the 1855 Place Project. This project is located in the Northwest Residential Mixed-Use District at the former site of the Michigan State Police East Lansing Post. The goals of this project include creating a living environment that supports both single students and student families around the resources they need to be academically successful, creating an institutional asset to further our world-class land-grant mission, consolidating office spaces from around campus, thus freeing up space for academic programs while saving resources and improving communication, and creating synergies between residential and hospitality services and intercollegiate athletics. The scope of this project will include a 102,000 square foot mixed-use office building that will be LEED Silver certified, which will include RHS offices, intercollegiate athletic offices, as well as retail space. Creation of 438,000 square feet of student apartments, both single student apartments, studio, two bedroom, and four bedroom, as well as family housing apartments, one bedroom and two bedroom. Creation of 2,075 parking spaces, including a parking deck, to accommodate students, staff, and campus events. Funding sources for this project will come from auxiliary funds, from RHS, intercollegiate athletics, and parking fees. Construction on this project commenced this past summer and will continue through the summer of 2017. The project will be completed in two phases to ensure that event parking is not impacted. Here we see the site as it existed prior to the start of construction, showing the location of University Village, which will remain after construction is complete, the location of event parking, which is being relocated to the south, as well as the three structures that have been demolished or relocated. The site redevelopment will include building of new family housing, single student apartments, retail and office space, and a new parking deck and surface lot. This project is being completed in two phases in order to minimize disruptions and to maintain event parking availability during the entirety of the project. Phase one included demolition of the existing police post buildings and the theater department scene shop, which was relocated to the South Campus next to the MSU Federal Credit Union. Phase one also includes the construction of the parking ramp and surface lot, as well as the construction of three family housing units. During phase one construction, a temporary construction access road has been installed to the west of the site. Phase two of the project will include construction of the single student apartment buildings as well as the office retail towers. During this phase, event parking will be moved to the newly constructed parking deck and surface lot. Here you see an aerial view rendering of the project showing the location of the new parking deck, the office and retail towers, single student apartment buildings, the existing university village structures, and the new family housing units. Here you see the address and building name assignments for this project. Please note that the address of the Communications Storage University Village Building is changing from 1165 Garden City Road to 1159 Pine Tree Court. The address of the parking booth for Lot 63 is also changing from 721 South Harrison Road to 675 South Harrison Road. Here is a view of the proposed office tower showing the intercollegiate athletic office spaces on the top floor. Here is a view of the mixed use tower from the corner of Harrison and Kalamazoo. Interior work continues at E Building number three, one of the family housing structures being constructed. 
At the same time, these buildings are being prepped for installation of exterior siding. The framing work on the family housing units is nearing completion. Framing on the D buildings is currently in progress. These units will provide single student townhouse type living spaces. For those of you who would like to follow the progress of construction on this project, please check out the live webcam site at the address on the screen. If you would like further information about this or any other project, visit the construction.msu.edu webpage. There you will find links to all current and past projects. Specific questions regarding the 1855 Place project can be directed to the project representative, Andy Linebaugh. We next have an update on the work that is being done as part of the Breslin Student Event Center Facility Upgrades Project. The Breslin Center is located in the Athletic and Recreation District. The university is undertaking this project in order to enhance the student, alumni, fan, and public experience by improving the functionality of the event center, to create a lasting legacy by integrating a sense of Spartan tradition throughout the facility, and to extend the useful life of the building by improving services to the fans and implementing major maintenance items. The project will be divided into two phases, facility upgrades and athletics addition. The phases are being designed in a way that minimizes rework and are being fully coordinated throughout their design and construction. Phase one will include a 22,000 square foot addition around the building, an expanded concourse, renovation and upgrading of the restroom facilities, renovation of concession stands, improvements to the entry vestibules to the main concourse, improvements to finish levels and experience on the concourse, improvements to site conditions for ingress and egress, improvements to site security, replacements of the chiller system, and connection to the East Lansing water system. Phase two will include a 30,000 square foot addition, which will create a sense of main entry and destination into the building and will include a basketball hall of history. Construction on this project began in January and is expected to be complete by August of 2017. Here you see the proposed floor plan of the completed facility, showing the expansion of the concourse area, the new restroom and concession areas, and the new Hall of History. Here is a graphic showing the work that is being scheduled during the period May 16 through June 3, designating those areas of the facility that will be offline. Note that other areas of the facility, including the arena, will remain open during construction to provide accessibility to various events. As part of the Breslin upgrade, there will also be changes to the area surrounding the center. A new plaza outside of the Hall of History is planned, with the Magic Johnson statue being slightly relocated to accommodate the new addition. There will also be improvements to adjacent parking and loading areas, as well as a new crosswalk across Harrison Road to the newly constructed parking ramp. Here you see views of the planned concourse expansion and entry improvements from the south, north, and west side of the center. Here you see an artist rendering of one of the upgraded concourse gate areas. Entrances will now have expanded plazas for better pedestrian flow, as well as double sets of doors to improve temperature maintenance. Here you see an artist rendering of the Hall of History Plaza, which will include the relocated Magic Johnson statue. Brick installation has begun on the addition to the northeast section of the facility. Construction on the southwest addition continues, as well as construction on the northwest addition. If you would like further information about this or any other project, visit the construction.msu.edu webpage. There you will find links to all current and past projects. Specific questions regarding the Breslin Center Facility Upgrades Project can be directed to the construction representative, Jason Van Zee, or the design representative, Jeff Bonk. We next have an update on the Facility for Rare Isotope Beams project. The FRIB facility is located in the Central Academic District at the intersection of Wilson Road and Bogue Street. There is currently a barricade along Wilson Road that separates pedestrians and cyclists from vehicle traffic. The barricade will remain until October of 2016. 
All four lanes of Wilson Road will be reopened in November of 2016. Here we have a rendered perspective from the southwest of the completed facility. Another rendering of the completed building from the southeast. And yet another rendering of the structure, this time from the northeast. Here you see an artist rendering of the aerial view of the completed structure. And here we have an actual aerial view of the FRIB project site. The FRIB project is progressing and remains ahead of schedule. Three of six helium compressors have been installed in the compressor room. Non-conventional utilities are 46% complete. Metal panel installation on the south elevation is ongoing. Installation of condenser water piping in the lower second floor chiller room is ongoing. Structural steel installation between the South High Bay and Target facility is resuming, as well as installation of coalescers. Here is a view of the compressor room showing the installed helium compressors. Cable installation between the high voltage switches and the substations continues. Masonry and metal panel installation on the southwest corner of the building has begun. And here's a view of the Linac tunnel looking east. If you would like further information about this or any other project, visit the construction.msu.edu webpage. There you will find links to all current and past projects. Specific questions regarding the facility for air isotope beams project can be directed to the project representative, Brad Bull. Next we have an update on the Cyclotron Office Edition project. The Cyclotron is located in the Central Academic District near the intersection of Bogue Street and Shaw Lane. This project serves to expand the office portion of the facility to accommodate the new staff, faculty, and students that are being hired in support of the FRIB project. The scope of the project includes partial demolition of the existing Cyclotron, build out of electrical and mechanical systems, construction of a new six-floor office addition encompassing approximately 74,000 square feet, and creation of a 265-seat auditorium on the first floor. Floors two through six will consist of perimeter offices with open space in the center area that can accommodate either cubicles or labs. Here is a typical office plan for floors two through six, showing the private offices around the north and south perimeter and the open area in the center for either cubicle or lab space. The project is currently on schedule with commissioning of equipment occurring throughout the summer. Masonry was completed in December. Elevator installation was completed in April. Flooring and painting began last month and the curtain wall will be completed this month. Construction began in February of 2015 and is scheduled to be ready for occupancy sometime this August. Here we have aerial views of the project site showing progress from December of 2015 through April of 2016. The sidewalk enclosure on the south side of Shaw Lane, installed to protect pedestrian traffic, will be taken down beginning the week of May 9. Pedestrian and bike traffic will share the bike lane on the south side of South Shaw Lane until the project is complete, sometime in August. Installation of drywall and door framing on the sixth floor is in progress. Here is a view showing the progress being made on the curtain wall framing on the north side of the building and a photo showing the installation of the rooftop units which were set in place this past January. If you would like further information about this or any other project, visit the construction.msu.edu webpage. There you will find links to all current and past projects. Specific questions regarding the Cyclotron Office Edition project can be directed to the construction representative, Jessica Kolp. Lastly, we have an update on the Giltner Hall Fish Lab renovations. Giltner Hall is located in the North Academic District. This project is being coordinated by the Faculty Readiness Project team. This team is comprised of representatives from both infrastructure planning and facilities, as well as facilities planning and space management. They work together with colleges to proactively plan for potential new hires, utilizing various delivery methods to shorten the bidding process, and creating construction timelines that provide a positive experience for the colleges and a welcoming environment for new faculty. 
This process helps to deliver a project that is of high quality, time and cost efficient, and supports the advancement of the university's research agenda. This project is necessary to provide a new zebrafish facility and various supporting lab and office spaces for two new integrative biology researchers that have been recruited from Oregon. The scope of the project includes renovations to rooms 39, 40, 41, 65, 67, 344A, and 363. In rooms 39, 40, and 41, there will be new security access, new lighting controls, cosmetic upgrades to the office in room 39, shoring of floor from the sub-basement, connections to the aquaneering fish lab equipment, including three large fish tank rows in the main fish room, new flooring, ceiling, and furniture in the developmental labs, a new quarantine room, a changing room for faculty, infill of an existing lab door, a new mechanical room with equipment for the lab's own HVAC system to provide required air changes and temperature requirements for the fish room, and exterior door and masonry work for the entryway to the new mechanical room. In rooms 65 and 67, there will be a new wall installed to separate the imaging and injection areas. In rooms 344A and 363, there will be cosmetic upgrades to the labs and offices on the third floor. Impacts to building occupants will include construction noise and periodic steam shutdowns. Construction began in March and will continue through July. The plans for the new areas will create office space, developmental labs, a changing area, quarantine room, fish room, filtration room, and a mechanical room. Here you see more detailed plans of both the injection and imaging lab in room 67, as well as the renovated office space in room 39. Construction in the main fish lab, room 40, is ongoing as well as construction of the departmental lab space. If you would like further information about this or any other project, visit the construction.msu.edu webpage. There you will find links to all current and past projects. Specific questions regarding the Giltner Hall Fish Lab project can be directed to the Faculty Readiness Project Representative, Monty Pride. This concludes the May Construction Junction presentation. We encourage you to visit the Infrastructure Planning and Facilities website at www.ipf.msu.edu. There you will find information on construction and maintenance alerts, detour information, construction junction information, project and contact information. There are also a number of other IPF resources available, including listservs that you can subscribe to to keep up to date with various IPF projects and events. Stay connected with IPF via social media. Follow us on Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Watch our videos on YouTube. And follow us on Instagram. Construction Junction presentations will be made available on the CJ website beginning the 7th of each month. We thank you for taking time to check us out, and we hope you'll visit again soon.